In this video, we'll be looking at the following example. We have the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n log n, and we want to determine whether this series converges or diverges. So notice that this is not a geometric series, it's not a telescoping series, and if we tried to apply the divergence test, we'd notice that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n log n would be 0, so the divergence test wouldn't tell us anything. So again, we're going to go ahead and try the integral test. Okay, so that means that I need to start by defining my associated function. So I'm going to let f of x be equal to 1 over x log x, and then I need to go about checking the conditions. So I need to show that this f of x here is positive continuous and decreasing for all x greater than or equal to 2. So notice that this um, sum here starts with n equals 2, so I'm going to try to show that these conditions are met for x greater than or equal to 2. Okay. So let's look at um, the positive condition first, okay? So we want to know is f of x positive for x greater than or equal to 2, okay? Well, we know that um, x here would definitely be positive, so what about the sign of log x when x is greater than or equal to 2? Or where could log x be negative? So remember that our log function looks like this. So the log function here is greater than zero um, after this intersection point of log x and the x-axis, which happens at one. So log x is greater than zero for x greater than one. Okay, so if we're talking about values greater than or equal to two, log x is definitely still positive. Okay, so one over x log x is greater than zero for x greater than or equal to 2, okay, since the log function is positive for values of um, x that are greater than 1. Okay, so we do have that condition. So what about continuity? So we want to know is f of x continuous for x greater than or equal to 2? Okay, so here we want to think about the domain of our function. So we have 1 over x log x. So what's the domain? of f of x equals 1 over x log x. Well, the log function itself um, requires x to be greater than or equal to 0, okay? But also, I know that I can't have um, something that's equal to 0 here in my denominator. So notice that log x equals 0 for x equals 1, so I have to exclude 1 from the domain here. Okay, because I can't be dividing by zero. So the domain of f of x in this case is positive numbers except one. Okay, well then um, if I'm talking about the values that are just greater than or equal to two, one over x log x will be defined at all of those values. Okay, so we can say um, so f of x is definitely continuous for x greater than or equal to 2. That's definitely true. Okay, so we don't have any of the problem values in the interval of, of values bigger than 2. So what about the decreasing part? Is f of x decreasing for x greater than or equal to 2? Okay, well we're going to find the derivative. So notice that we can write f of x here as x log x to the negative 1. Okay, so our derivative would be negative x log x to the negative 2 times the derivative of x log x, so we're using the chain rule here. So that's x times 1 over x plus log x. So notice that this simplifies to negative 1 plus log x all over x log x squared. Okay, that's our derivative. So we want to know where this derivative is negative and positive because we're trying to make sure that it is negative for values of x greater than or equal to 2. So I'm going to have to make a sign chart. And the sign chart is already over the domain that we have. Okay, 
So I know that um, my domain for my function was values of x greater than 0, but not including 1. Okay, those are values where the um, at 0 and 1 would be values where this derivative would not exist. Okay, but I also need to figure out where this derivative is equal to 0. And we see that our derivative will equal 0, where our numerator here is equal to 0. So that'll be where 1 plus log x is equal to 0, or where log x is equal to negative 1. So that's where x would be equal to e to the negative 1, or 1 over e. Okay, so that puts um, a critical point right here on our sign chart. Um, so remember, what we're really interested in here is that our function is eventually decreasing. So we're saying we want it to be decreasing here for x greater than or equal to 2. It would actually be okay if this turned out to be decreasing for, say, x greater than or equal to 3, because then we could look at the um, integral from 3 to infinity and then conclude something about the sum from n equals 3 to infinity. And we know the sum from n equals 3 to infinity would have the same behavior as the sum from n equals 2 to infinity. So we really just care that our function is eventually decreasing. In other words, we want to find whatever the biggest um, critical point is and make sure that it's decreasing after that point. Okay, so here we'll just check what's happening after 1. Looks like that's our biggest um, critical value here. If I plug in something bigger than 1, like e, I notice that log e is 1, so I would have negative 2 here in the numerator divided by this um, x log x being squared, which is positive, so it will be negative over there. So we can say that, so f prime here is less than 0 for x greater than 1, that's what we're getting from our sign chart, which certainly means that f prime of x is less than 0 for x greater than or equal to 2, okay, which is what we were trying to show, and this means so f of x here is decreasing for x greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so in our next step, we'll go ahead and look at our integral from 2 to infinity. And we know we're going to be able to apply the integral test because we have now um, have these, these three conditions being met. So whatever we get for the convergence or divergence of this integral will mean that our um, associated series also either converges or diverges. So I need to evaluate the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x log x. This is an improper integral. I need to rewrite it as a limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 2 to b of 1 over x log x dx. I'm going to go ahead and use u substitution here. You notice several of these um, integral test problems will use um, u substitution, but we could use really any integration technique that we've had so far. Okay. So notice that because I am doing u substitution, I'm going to have to change those limits. So this will be from log 2 up to log b. I'll have 1 over u du. Okay, just remind ourselves we do need those u limits. Now we can go ahead and find our antiderivative. So I have log of u here evaluated from log 2 to log b. Okay, so notice that this gives me the limit as b goes to infinity here of log of log b minus log of log 2. Okay, so I need to think about what's happening with this log log of b. Remember that our log function looks like this. Okay. If the inside of the log function, if x is going off to infinity, then the log function is going off to infinity, because as x gets bigger and bigger, the y values are getting bigger and bigger. So as b goes to infinity, this log b is going to infinity. Well, that means, again, I have something inside of a log function that's going off to infinity. So log of something that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger is also going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is going to be equal to infinity, okay? because I just have this minus a constant here, which won't affect the fact that this limit is um, coming out to infinity. So now we're ready to draw our conclusion and say that since our integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x log x dx diverges, so we have to indicate that we know that that infinity means our integral diverges, the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n log n here, whoops, n log n 
also diverges by the integral test. Okay, so please let me know if you have any questions on these examples applying the integral test.